Hi, you remember Fontus? <laughs> Explore nature without worrying about drinking water. The world's first self-filling water bottle. <gasps> look at its solar power. Look at the tiny little solar cell there. And it just, look, refills itself magically. You're in the middle of nowhere. No worries. You can just whack out your solar panel, get yourself some drinking water. Even though he rides right through the water. <laughs> Piss ant little solar panels on it and it can generate water. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, they ran a very successful Indiegogo campaign back in uh, 2016. They raised 345,000 Yankee bucks to finish the design and build of this thing. And they made lots of claims on here. Look, they had like a functional prototype there, right? Functional prototype, you'd think it'd be, you know, producing decent amount of water. And they actually even had data down here where, you know, how much water it actually uh, produces. Wank, wank, all this sort of stuff. And, you know, look, it, it looks legit. Info efficiency factors and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's, it sounded legit and they raised a lot of money. Of course, it was all complete and utter bullshit. And I, in video number 881, I uh, debunked this along with um, Thunderfoot as well, who's done, I don't know, like four or five hilarious videos. Uh, check those out. I just bust in the Fontas as well. From day one, they knew that this thing... I, they did not have a working prototype that actually produced anywhere near the volume of water that they claimed. And I literally did some back of the envelope calculations here, actually on the back of an envelope, which I ended up mailing to them, by, by the way, which I thought was fantastic. There you go. I wonder if Christoph actually got um, his <laughs> at the applied arts... Um, <laughs> <laughs> university department. It was all about energy because this is just a dehumidifier and how much uh, energy is required to pull water out of the air, um, humid air in this particular case. And they made some very specific claims and I calculated that you would basically need a rooftop sized solar panel, best case, to get the figures that they claimed. And they had this little piss ant one. Anyway, it was complete and utter demonstrable bullshit with trivial back of the envelope calculations. They don't know how to do basic engineering calculations or if they did, they completely and utterly ignored them. Anyway, it was never ever going to work as they claim, not even close. But you'll be happy or sad to know that it didn't work out for poor Fontus because they've filed for bankruptcy just the other day. Here it is. I'll link it in down below. Bankruptcy. This is translated, by the way. Um, Fontus Water Technology in Vienna. Object of the company. Research and development of technologies for the extraction of water from air as well as production and distribution of corresponding products. Affected creditors. Uh, they actually note the creditors on here. The uh, approximately 1,500 Indiegogo backers that contributed the th the $345,000 and it turns out the liabilities 300,000 euros and their assets they still have 64,000 euros left I don't know maybe they've got some test gear or they've got other I don't know they might have like a ton of <laughs> these plastic molded water bottles sitting around I don't know uh, they plan to develop a drinking bottle which should be refilled via the humidity this bottle was designed primarily for use in various outdoor sports the development of the bottle is said to have far exceeded the plan cost so that the applicant had no sufficient capital for the series production of the water bottle after completion of development work despite efforts not enough investors could be found for series production therefore the obligation to deliver Deliver water bottles to the lenders could not be met and they've actually been saying this for quite some time so if you've been following their updates here they've basically admitted that look we're looking for investors we can't deliver this um, you know where we're running out of money all that sort of stuff and yep they've finally run out of money couldn't find any investors because I guess you know it's not not hard to find investors with this you know they raised a lot of money very high profile they won a James uh, like a Dyson award and stuff like that right yeah they're getting all the press and all the praise and everything else and or yeah I guess the investors went well give us loan us one of your water bottles and I'll leave it out and if it you know produces the liter of water uh, tomorrow you've got your money it didn't produce the water. <laughs> I'm just... 
like it. <laughs> As I'll show shortly. Um, it's hilarious. Anyway, backers may get some money back, but as you saw, they've only got $65,000 in assets, if that's even worth It's probably not, ca don't know if that's cash assets or not. Offers insolvency creditors a recovery plan rate of 20%, payable two years from the date of adoption. So anyway, yeah, um, I don't know. You might get a few bucks back if you were foolish enough to invest in Fontus. But it's over. It's done, dusted. But hey, it's not a bad gig if you can raise like $340,000 and then spend a couple, of, you can work on this full time for a couple of years and then it goes bust, people have lost some money. Oh, sorry, didn't work out, you know. Have a nice day and just go on to the next stupid invention um, and crowdfund it yet again, rinse, repeat, and you can spend your whole career doing this sort of stuff. They only wanted $30,000 and they ended up with $345,000. Now it's impossible to know whether or not they realistically thought that they could do it for $30,000 or whatever their goal was. But when something like this goes viral and, and you get a crap ton of money uh, involved with this, what do you do? Um, they obviously have basically admitted that they didn't have the real functional prototype that produced anywhere near the water um, that they claimed it did. And uh, they just like, kept using that money to run experiments, developing new products. And, you know, they did actually do some development, rather hilarious as it was in various uh, uh, prototype photos over the last uh, two years. That's been a, like a hilarious venture in its own right, as they come to the realization that this thing isn't really possible. So what do you do? Um, they must have realized at some point that this simply was not going to be pract a practical product. It works as all these types of uh, things work, be it uh, the Fontus, the water sear, the batterizer, the, the U-beam, the whatever it is, they all work, but they're just not practical. And that's the thing. Do you admit that it's not practical and refund whatever money you had back and say, sorry, you know, go away with your tail between your legs and we're, we're not gonna spend any more of your money and give it back? No, of course not. You know, that'd be the honorable thing to do. No, you just double down and just keep on going until the wheels fall off the billy cart. For, and this was actually posted right back in 2016 and it's a reply from Fontus about all the criticism of this uh, crowdfunding campaign. The Fontus project started as an industrial design exercise at the University of Applied Arts. The concept is one that has been around for thousands of years in various forms and it was our and ours was to modernize it. Originally the calculations for water gathering rate at optimum conditions were just that calculations. However, at that time, focus was not on the technology itself, more of the design and concept. Very important fact that has been overlooked. And the input data parameters from the initial concept will not be representative of the final product that you will be getting. So all academics can relax their math muscle for now. Yeah. <laughs> It just, just requires money to like overcome the laws of physics. Unbelievable. Fast forward to now, and after almost two years of no activity, the product idea and concept got shared all over social media and became viral without intention or effort. It has been mentioned that one culprit of this is the video quality, which then could lead some people to think it already existed at the production level. You think all this sort of stuff? And the slick video that goes along with it. Look, like the photorealistic renders everything else. Look, it's on the back of a backpack. That looks real, right? This dude riding his mountain bike. He's got his Fontus there. And it like, you know, all this, it's mentioned in all these sorts of places as if you wouldn't think this is real. Like, you know, I can't necessarily blame in anyone without a, you know, engineering background for thinking this might be, you know, a, a legit thing and they look it looks totally real it looks like it does the business you know you got the data to back it up prototypes and everything else and you mentioned that you had a functional prototype and all you need is the money to put it into production well you know it's, it's as if people wouldn't think that you're at that stage while we would very much like that this is not the case it is not the case. It does not exist. However, due to the surging popularity, we decided to leverage the momentum and crowd and launch crowdfunding a bit earlier than planned. So they saw that this thing went viral and they went, oh, we can get funding for this. Fantastic. Without even having 
a proper functional prototype just based on some ridiculous calculations. They tested it in their bathroom with all the steam going and they pulled out a few drops of water. That was their original claim. It's various high level institutions support the idea and believe in the need to develop an innovative technology that combines different techniques for harvesting water from the air with low energy input. <laughs> No, it's a Peltier Effect dehumidifier, the kind that I showed in my video. You can buy from Amazon for like a hundred bucks and they're like, they pull out, they extract water from the air. What? That's what they do. This is not, this was never ever going to be that this innovative technology that combines different techniques. What sort of techniques? Apply energy from a solar cell into a Peltier device and you know hot on one side cold on the other Maybe you can extract a few drops of water from the air under you know decent conditions We have been selected as international top 20 for the James Dyson award where projects go through a thorough Examination by an engineers team. So apparently to win that uh, the, the top 20 James Dyson award it was examined by a team of engineers Yeah, bullshit Again, the graphics and images shown at our crowdfunding campaign are partly based, entirely based, <laughs> on first experiments and, severe, and serve merely for illustrative purposes. The input parameters are being optimized to get the best performance and we'll publish the test data, blah, blah, once the operating range, blah, blah, blah. This, they admitted this back in the thing, but they took people's money anyway with this slick advertising campaign and now they've uh, hit the reality of engineering and physics and it just doesn't work. Even if they could find funding, it still wasn't going to work. And look at this, they knew way back in at least May 2017 that this thing was not going to be practical for the claimed application. This is their original claim in from the crowdfunding campaign. Basically one liter of water, 90% humidity uh, for two hours, right? With that little pissant solar panel. That's what was implied, you know, like the order of 10, 15 watts absolute tops. And this is from their update report in May 2017. They're basically 1.5 liters of water from a car plug pull in 120 watts of power for 18 hours to get 1.5 liters or a 200 watts from a wall outlet. This is the, using their uh, tech system, which is the thermoelectric generator, 200 watts over 24 hours to get two liters. So that's basically 100 watts for uh, 24 hours to get one liter. And as we'll see, that's pretty much um, what they got with independent test reports. They knew this back in May 2017, an 80 watt solar mat for hiking. Like how big is an 80 watt panel? It's gotta be this huge. You've gotta have a huge roll. You'd have to unroll it and then it's flat and you'd have to sit there for 12 hours in the sun, probably tracking the sun to get your full 80 watts to get your lousy one liter of water. Unbelievable. They knew this way back in 2017. It's published. If you have a look at their latest update here, they've had it tested by TUV, which is, of course, an independent, you know, very reputable testing authority. Where have we seen this before? Oh, yeah, the batterizer that got tested by <laughs> UL. And that was an absolute joke. They've done the same thing here. Last ditch effort to save this thing and impress the investors. Let's go to a, spend some money, go to the third party, independent, reputable, and uh, get it independently tested. Well, we have the report. It's not very long because they didn't do much at all. They are completely reputable. They will do testing that you specify and they will give a report of the results. And in this case, it's a dehumidifier for producing drinking water for outdoor use. And look at this. This is hilarious. Uh, their own requirements for testing this thing at the independent test house more than two years after this Indiegogo campaign finished and they raised all this money. Two years of development. This is what they got. They got it, you know, it's okay, it's kind of funky looking, right? You know, they got the plastics and everything else is fine. But look at how much power. As I said in the original video, it all comes down to energy slash power for a dehumidifier. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of power 
input into the Peltier device to get the water out. And look, they're running just the fan alone, 12 volts at 2 amps. There's 24 watts right there. Just to power the fan is bigger than this little pissant solar panel that they were going to actually uh, supply with it. Right there, that couldn't even run the fan. It gets worse. The supply to the Peltier device in there, the element, which does the business, 20 volts at 4 amps. That's 80 watts. So we're talking over 100 watts total. So I was... <laughs> I was pretty much on the money there with my solar panel. Let's have a look at how much water it produced, shall we? Two tests, one at 30 degrees, one at 35 degrees Celsius in 95% relative humidity. They did it inside the relative humidity chamber. That's proper engineering, right? That's how you're supposed to do it. They should have done this before they started the Indiegogo campaign. But no, two, no, they, they've only done this two years later, right? So they tested this for 24 hours. How much water did it produce? 95% humidity. Okay, let's go for the 30 degrees. Call it one liter of water. After 22 hours, the fan broke. <laughs> this is great. It just gets better. Anyway, 24 hours test. It produced a liter of water with a hundred over 100 watts input. We're talking about this thing having one 120th of the claimed performance. And that's what everyone was saying way back at day one. If you did the back of the envelope calculations and looked at Kirshen commercial dehumidifiers, it was obvious. Basic back of the envelope engineering told you that's the case. And sure enough, it was. After two years of research and development and $300,000 $300, spent. Unbelievable. Well, no, it's not. It's completely believable because physics. So there you go. Fontus, it's a complete farce. It's finally over and they're bankrupt. And maybe, you know, backers will get a few bucks back. Deal, they've pulled down their video, of course. Um, <laughs> It looked like the real deal, and if you follow the updates, it was it's just hilarious. And over on the EV blog forum, we've been following it. As I said, uh, Thunderfoot's been following this with various videos over the last uh, two years. And the prototypes, they finally came to the re realization that, oh, it's just a dehumidifier, and oh, we just need an off-the-shelf Peltier device, and let's run some <laughs> crap load of power through it, and we can get... Ooh, look, water condensers on the plate, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you get a, uh, you know, a, a design, arts design student who, granted, produced some fantastic looking videos and photos and everything else, you know. Hats off. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, conned people out of their uh, $345,000. Luckily, they couldn't con the investors, unlike, you know, many other ones we've covered, like U-Beam, and uh, people just get carried away with the hype of these things, they don't do the basic back of the envelope calculations and any media reporting. Like, actually, there's some good ones which, um, it, you know, admit that they were wrong. Uh, hi hydration anywhere. Hats off to them, right? Originally, they sung the praises of Fontas just based on the really, you know, fantastic premise of it and the, and the slick nature of the advertising and stuff like that. But they eventually... Um, went, well, it looks like it was a scam. We were wrong, you know, and here's people, including myself and, and Thunderfoot, who have done the uh, calculations. They knew it was a scam. They'd done a, like a nice uh, investigative analysis of this thing, pointing it out, and yeah, that's it, it's really quite nice. So we're, we're sorry, and they apologize that they got it wrong. Fantastic. So, you know, hats off. I wish more uh, media and other uh, people, you know, did stuff like this. Anyway, it's a good gig if you can get it, huh? Race 340,000 bucks, spend a couple of years, travel around China, everywhere else, win all these awards, get all this media praise, and the merry-go-round had to stop eventually. And even if they found the investors to keep them going for another couple of years, it would have eventually ended up in the same way, because it's not magic. You need a large amount, a very large amount of energy, 120 times what they originally claimed, you need to pull that amount of water under ideal, ideal conditions. Too bad if you you know, live in an ordinary environment, you're not gonna have the power, you're not gonna have the humidity, and it's just not gonna work. So there you go, Fontus has come to an end, uh, bankrupt.
good riddance. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.